men and women when they are truly awakened, begin to realize that there is nothing which is so serious as to be without the presence of God. Do you get its full force? God was sending them to the promised land. God was saying, go up. I promised you the land of Canaan. I'm going to give it to you. You shall go to the land flowing with milk and honey. I'll send my angel before you to destroy these enemies, these Amorites, these Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites and Jebusites. Go on. Go up to your promised land. I brought you out of the captivity of Egypt. I'm sending you on. Go ahead. Lead them, Moses. I'll send an angel with you. And the people said, no. If you're not coming with us, we don't want to go. Now that's the essence of spiritual understanding. And that's the thing, my dear friends, that you and I have got to come to. You see, here were the people who suddenly awakened, uh, came to this tremendous, profound realization that to be given every, given every other blessing is of no value if God doesn't do with you. What's the value of Canaan? What's the value of milk and honey? What's the value of having possessions? If you are not with us, they saw that the realization of the presence of God, having his fellowship and company, was infinitely more important than everything else. Need I apply this to the church today? You can have successes over your enemies, you know. Without this great realization of God in the midst. Oh yes. There are angels who can do that for us. Destroy certain of our enemies. Take us to the land. We're in Canaan. We've got the milk and honey. Yes, everything seems to be all right. There's an appalling verse in Psalm 106. Where we are told to the children of Israel. God granted them their requests. But sent leanness into their soul. You can have an outward prosperity and affluence. The church may, be, may seem to be doing remarkably well. Good finances, good figures, successes, conversions, enemies defeated. Everything going well. And the newspapers report it. The Christian newspapers report it. It all seems to be marvelous. But the appalling question I ask is this. Is God in the midst? Is he really amongst us? Are we aware, as we should be, of his glorious presence? That's the thing that got these people. And what they said, in effect, was, Canaan's no use to us. Milk and honey are of no value. We're not interested in these enemies. We want you. Oh, says the psalmist, it is for thee I cry out as the heart panteth after the water brooks. So panteth my soul after thee, O God. He's not after blessings. He's after God, the living God. Yes, says Paul. Oh, I've been a successful evangelist. I've done so much. But oh, I'm not satisfied that I might know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. No, no, they said. We can't go on. Without you, the presence of God is essential. They came to that realization. And as I say, their realization was that no outward prosperity and no type of success can compensate for the absence of God. What shall it profit a man though he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Christian people, I'm not asking you this morning whether you're living a good life. I'm not asking you whether you're happy. I'm not asking you whether you read your Bible and whether you pray. I'm not asking you whether you're active in church work or in some other form of Christian activity. What I'm asking you is this. Do you know God? Is he with you? Is he in your life? Is he in the camp? Or are you traveling on with God, as it were, somewhere in the distance, given strength and power by his angel and by his leader and so on? But the question is, what of you in your personal relationship and your personal dealings? 